Hello, I'm with uh, Shahinda Banerjee, the CEO of uh, the Math Company, the company that helps organizations analytically transform themselves. Uh, Shahin, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, so, Shahin, on, on behalf of the Math Company, you help the world's largest insurers and the world's largest retailers and the CPG companies and even some of the largest casinos and uh, hotels. I don't transform analytically, right? And looks like that's the buzzword today. Every company that I talk to wants to go through the analytical transformation journey, right? So what what is this beast called analytical transformation, you know, and, and why is it so important today in this world to go through the journey? Yeah. No, I think uh, this is a good question. Uh, this is the, the fundamental premise on which uh, the math company is based, right? Um, we, I'm sure most of us have heard about digital transformation. I mean, this was something that over the last three, four, five years is, you know, kind of taking the world by storm. Now, if I look at analytical transformation, it is it is nothing but a, the core subset of the overall digital transformation. Uh, what it means simply is, you know, kind of the ability for organizations to make better, faster, more personalized decisions, leveraging data, leveraging the power of analytics, data science, machine learning, and AI, right? What not? Now, now that is that is the outcome that that we are we are talking about. Now, what does what does that really mean? Um, um, many a times, the the common misconception is that you know, kind of analytics transformation is about implementing a few cool use cases. Right? We have you know done some use case using video data, using audio data, and you know did some neural net, and and, and that's analytical transformation. Um, unfortunately, that is not the case. Right? It, it is it is about a holistic change in the organization. It is about a change in culture. It is about a change in mindset. It is about you know a, a transformation for the organization to to make decisions in a different way. I mean, this is no longer a separate function. It is no longer a separate caste, you know, kind of sitting out there. But but really, you know, kind of when every every small things that are done in the organization are done leveraging data. Everybody is you know kind of looking into it the same. So that's pretty much what I you know kind of look at analytical transformation is, and that's what we are trying to achieve with these organizations that we are working. Fantastic. That's a great answer. Thanks for that. So suppose the companies go through this journey of analytical transformation and, and clearly based on what you said, it's going to be a you know, the inside out change that the organization needs to uh, you know, go through to become, uh, go through a fundamental shift in the in the mindset and the culture of the organization, right? So how, do, how does the end state look like? So if I do a dipstick test from outside, how do I know if the organization is fundamentally transformed analytically or not? Yeah. Well, um, honestly, you know, the the, the business the, the, the business has to look different right I mean that is how the true impact will be felt right a, a business which was probably a old monolithic business uh, you know which is now getting to more you know personalization to hyper localization and you know kind of doing things in a more real-time basis you know that is where the real change and impact will be felt but if you look at if you if you zoom in and see what's happening inside the organization, right? From outside in, once you look at what is happening with an organization in the marketplace, right? But when you go inside the organization, you'll see what I kind of mentioned before that there is a shift in the mindset of each and every individual, you know, kind of in the organization. It is it is not about hey, you know what, I will ask that team or that set of you know kind of individuals to do something with this data. It is that look, you know, here is information, here is data, here is, you know, kind of some other information that I have. How can I leverage that to make my decision for today, to make my decision for tomorrow? So this shift, and I know it's, it is much more easier, you know, kind of say it than done, but uh, but that's really what needs to happen uh, for somebody to go. So you mean to say analytics should be an inherent part of any decision or any meeting or any... Uh, yeah, know, I mean, take process. an example. Let's yeah. take an example, right? Let's let's look at audit as a process. Right? I mean, um, obviously there was a time when there was no you know kind of audit the way it happens, the, what the big four does right for the world. But I don't think you know you can think of any organization today, large, small, whatever, who do not have audit as a built-in fundamental process. Right. right. I mean, there's just one small example. There are there are many many such examples. Analytics is not there yet. Definitely not there. But that transformation that we're talking about means that the organization should have that as a fundamental you know characteristics or a feature built into the organization you know, overall and, and not necessarily in a particular team and things like that. that is really the audacious goal that, that we are you know kind of uh, driving towards and uh, do you think uh, this 
many a times uh, you know leads to a fundamental shift in the business model itself like uh, you know for example if i go to a movie theater today you know, either i uh, there is only one thing that's being shown and i either watch i watch i either don't watch uh, versus uh, you know there is a netflix where i can just let tip of my finger it can satisfy any of my emotional entertainment needs of that particular point in time where i can you know choose from million available choices you know without really going to uh, uh, the theater absolutely fine absolutely. i mean i mean it, it changes it changes business i think more importantly it changes behavior right at the end of the day for for you as a movie goer you were you know kind of your behavior was you know look you know let's wait for the weekend and see what are the new releases i go to a theater and see that movie what is sorry uh, the whole behavior changes you don't necessarily wait for that weekend to happen because this is you know kind of coming to you in a manner you know which is suiting your emotions yes, your yeah. needs and and things like that right and then at any given point of time and, and that that's uh, that's brilliant right i mean uh, i mean again time will say you know kind of what what the real impact is but but i think it's not just change in business it's change in behavior as well fantastic that that's that's very interesting and uh, and intriguing and uh, scaring at the same time so uh, looks like best one is saying shyan uh, you know it's uh, it's a, it's a big journey right uh, so there is uh, you know there is a mindset and culture shift and there is a shift in the way people look at their jobs and and their life uh, you know in the organization right and how it looks for the outside world and and maybe it's going to you know transform to in, in the business model itself in where from delivering a product to delivering an outcome right uh, so it looks like it's a long journey so where where do i start this journey if i am a ceo or a ceo of an organization today uh, you know thinking through go through this journey where do i start yeah um Honestly, um, there are a few. I would say most best practices, right? There is no one single guideline because every organizations are different, the organization cultures are different, right? I mean, their positions are different. Uh, but having said that, you know, uh, because of what we have been doing for the last two two and a half years with many different organizations across the globe, um, there are a couple of things which uh, you know at least I feel are are you know kind of a must do when when we are starting off. Um, and what are they you know, while it is a definitely longest journey that i talked about uh, there is lot of fundamental work that needs to be done around data around infrastructure and and get ready for that but the starting point you know the the sooner we can get to a couple of use cases right? some you know you can call in the low hanging fruits some use cases that the organization is already you know talking about there is there seems to be a need and solving them and and you know implementing them and showing some movement some impact you know kind of based on that at a very initial stage is is super critical right i mean uh, you know that that helps gain credibility that gets you know kind of bigger sponsorship and and so on and so forth right so so doing a few you know kind of use cases uh, the other part and by the way this use case this data these are all in my mind are supply side problems right if you look at you know what economics have taught us is is really confluence of demand, demand and supply, and supply yeah. right so the demand side is is also very critical and often neglected so what i mean by that is you know alongside these use cases i think one you should also do as as a initial part of the journey is the start a large scale awareness program the sooner the bigger organization is aware when i say bigger organization i mean not only the leadership but the you know kind of that individual at the teller machine in the bank you know kind of uh, operating window or the sales guy right out there in the field or you know the person who is in the warehouse right the sooner the awareness grows um, i think you know better it is so starting with a large scale awareness program and solving a few use cases seems like a decent and a good way to start again best practices organizations may differ you know they might have some history so we have to probably look at So basically, you're talking about like uh, demand leads to supply, and supply leads to more demand, and and uh, and, 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 and uh, like a virtuous, virtuous cycle. cycle yeah. Virtuous cycle, yeah. So it looks like there is a bunch of uh, pieces of this puzzle. You talked about data. You talked about infrastructure, right? So uh, there are you know different things going on here that have to fall in place in order for the analytical transformation to become become effective. All right. So what are those various pieces that that we need to be worrying about? You know, as we start this journey, and also most more importantly. Uh, you know, do we need to wait till these things, all these pieces of the puzzle, come together and are ready? You know, before I actually kick off my analytical transformation. So, what's what's your opinion on that? Sure, sure. Um, again, um, very good question. Um, because, see, one of the common pitfalls that we have seen, and, and we keep talking to a lot of our clients and prospects about it, that yes, when we talk about this whole analytics transformation and analytics journey, obviously it starts with data. 
right? I mean, at the end of the day, you know, if you don't have anything, any recorded information, then I'm sorry, you know, magic cannot be created out of vacuum. So, so don't get me wrong. You need anyone needs, you know, some hygiene in terms of data. You need infrastructure, right? Some some infrastructure to start working. So, so again, there is no escaping from that. But having said that, right, many a times uh, the the whole thought process is that let me get my data ready and let me get my infrastructure you know kind of right up to speed um, fortunately or unfortunately that will actually never happen right because you know data will never be you know fully fully ready you'll, you'll get more information you'll get it better you'll create more data i mean this this journey will continue and and the same is true for infrastructure as well right infrastructure will also constantly evolve if you look at the various levels of the technological stack right i mean it, the last four or five years it has, it has evolved so much right and and honestly you know every quarter and definitely every year there are newer things that are coming up so that journey will continue what you need to start thinking about is one i talked about you know identifying the right use case that is one you need to think about talent right from the beginning you know that is one very very important piece in this analytical transformation you know again fortunately unfortunately no matter how much we talk about you know machine really getting up to speed and, and getting you know kind of bigger man still plays a very important role. So, so we have to figure out <coughs> talent right? where will the right talent will come from internal external you know kind of how do you start creating and you know, stand up a you know initial team you have to think about governance very very critical right i mean where who owns this whole initiative right i mean where who is vested in the success of this you know kind of the whole journey um where does demand originate you know kind of where does it flows in how does it flows back and and at the end of the day how is it getting consumed so governance across the organization becomes a very critical thing and and again often neglected um, knowledge management right it might sound cliche but you know most of the time people say oh you know we are too early you know kind of let's just solve a few problems and then we'll figure about it but what happens even in that journey you know there is too much of inefficiency that starts creeping in if you don't start thinking about it from the beginning you know you start reinventing your wheels you start you know kind of doing the same things again and again uh, particularly in large organizations you know that becomes a nightmare right i mean uh, in many different aspects so so knowledge management governance talent along with data and infrastructure are are again all the dimensions that you need to think of right from the very beginning so you can't do it sequentially that let me do one and then get to the second great great uh, so while you are saying that there are like these five or six dimensions, uh, when there's the knowledge management, the governance is there, and the infrastructure data, etc., is there. But link, don't wait to get all these things right before you start your journey, right? Uh, so get some some fundamentals in place and start off the journey while uh, you know while other things fall in place as you go. So uh, Shine, we are talking about uh, infrastructure. Uh, you know, uh, although there is an SASS of the world today, uh, there is going to be a good amount of investment in the you know in the, in the servers and in the softwares, right? And of course, there is the data. You know, irrespective of whether it's internal data or if I'm procuring it from the nations of the world, uh, there is going to be some amount of expenditure and stuff like that, right? While the big behemoths can, you know, can have deep pockets to afford this, what about the smaller fishers, right? If I'm a medium-sized company today, like a $5 billion company, uh, you know, can can I afford to go through this? How much should I really budget for, right? And, and should I wait till I attain some critical mass uh, before I start off anything that's analytical really in nature? That's true. Look, I, th I think the, the amount of investment is... Um, you know, there has to be obviously some investment, but um, you know, one can start small or one can start in a big way. So, so we'll 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 get to that. Um, see, no matter what size an organization is, the truth is that in today's world, right, if you are not leveraging information and if you are not leveraging the power of analytics and machine learning and AI to get better, right, you better be prepared to become obsolete. I mean, this goes without saying no matter you know kind of what size an organization is right now you're right i mean if it is a it is a walmart if it is a you know pfizer if it is a unilever right they obviously have much deeper pockets right they can spend a lot more in in data in infrastructure but you know organizations which are small and medium right they also have access to a lot of information a lot of their own information a lot of outside information. So there has to be a way to you know kind of prioritize and identify you know at least some initial you know kind of use cases to start with because see the beauty is that most of this investment will pay many times for itself. I mean this is proven you know kind of beyond doubt. Mm. It, it, it's a matter of how long can I hold, right? Can I put some money upfront, right? 
the whether it will give me a return i think that that question is, is kind of not not asked I, I hopefully not asked anymore uh, and 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 you know here they sh- you know there are opportunities to look at partners you know uh, honestly you know kind of maybe partners like us who can bring some of this transformation you know kind of initiatives or the journey almost as a service right where you can take it in bite sizes you don't have to you know kind of do everything so and the last thing i'll mention is that you know you talked about data you talked about infrastructure so talking about infrastructure right i mean whether it be storage whether it be software we all know that cost is coming down you know kind of mm, as we speak right true. that is you know if you look at even 10 years back and today you know you know it is it is is or sometimes you know kind of very uh, funny to to you know kind of see how much the changes right those numbers are uh um, data you mean if it is your internal data right i mean yeah there are some ways that you have to figure out some cost but if it is internal data it's your data right you are not necessarily buying nielsen data or or you know kind of ims data or something like this you know from outside which will which will cost you money your internal data is internal data so so there are ways to you know kind of uh, figure out how to start the journey in a smart manner but um, not doing it and waiting for something to happen it will will not Uh, so shine uh, both personally as well as on on behalf of the math company i'm sure you have gone through tens or even hundreds of uh, you know organizations and helped them go through this transformation and i'm sure a lot of them have started at very different points in terms of their maturity and and reached wherever their destiny is right and, and most of them are still going through that journey right so based on everything that you have seen you know if you need to up, you need to abstract a few things that you take away from it and would give us an advice uh, you know for the for the ceos and cios who are starting off the journey today what would that advice be top three is is very difficult there are there are actually quite a few but but i think it's important because the laundry list won't help right so we need to think of i think the first and foremost is um, and i'll probably be repeating myself or whatever i said because you know there is not too many different things right so the first thing is that you know please understand that this is a long term journey right this is not about a few quick wins by implementing you know two or three cool use cases right so be prepared you know kind of buckle up if you are the ceo you have to figure out you know kind of sponsorship budget if you are not if you are the cio if you are the you know ceo you figure out you know kind of what alignment you need in the organization to be prepared for long term because you know while you obviously can see some impact coming in probably in the 6 to 9 months window but to really get to the state that we are talking about it's a longish journey so so be prepared for that that is one uh two um you know again i i mentioned this um uh, it is very very important that sooner in that journey sooner in your transformation journey right you get to the right use cases and start working on them right even if it is not in the most efficient manner right it may be it may look very inefficient you might have to stitch together various different data sources the infrastructure is not ideal it is taking you know way longer to crunch data it's okay so you're talking about a bias for action rather than just sitting on the ppt yeah yeah i'm, I'm saying you know kind of that's okay right i mean many a times you know we want to get to that i would say that in you know, a hypothetical state that you know, uh, you know utopia right which will which will never happen so so get to use cases you know bring in some inefficiencies that's okay you know kind of solve them show some impact in sharing right so that is that is the that is the second one that i'll say uh, the third one is is you know while this is all the supply side story right you know get your use cases you know kind of while you are working on data i think don't ignore the demand side you know that's the one single reason why organizations fail so which means the awareness program that i talked about how do you make people aware and knowledgeable about you know kind of what to expect you know what are the limits what are the possibilities so you can you know kind of uh, bring that in so 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 those are the three things you know long term journey you know kind of uh, you know focus on the demand side and you know kind of uh, get to the use cases bias for action as you call it so I, i'll probably stop at this fantastic so shan this was a super informative as well as very enlightening session for us and thanks for sharing your experience my pleasure my pleasure thank you